Hi guys, um, right now I'm here on the Galapagos Islands on Santa Cruz, which is the island that I've been living on for the past one and a half months, so since the beginning of June. And tomorrow I'm actually going to be starting my dive adventure of a lifetime probably. I thought this might be one of the best times to start like a little bit of a vlog format. Um, many people asked me to do so and yeah, this might be one of the best opportunities. This is a little experiment. So if you see this video, uh, yeah, the experiment might be a good one, might be a bad one. I don't know yet. Um, you can tell me, but I'm excited for the next coming days. It'll be amazing. Yeah, I'll show you a little bit of Galapagos as well, which uh, which you have seen. It's been it's been amazing here so far. I've been um, meeting a lot of locals. The wildlife is insane, as you all know. Um, but also the human history is actually something to dive in deeper. Um, yeah, here you can see some of the of the local animals uh, that I've been catching around. And yeah, I'm happy to show you a little bit of Wolf and Darwin Island, where we're gonna head. Catch you then. So uh, right now is the night before the trip starts and I'm um, just about to get all my stuff ready. Just enjoy it for when I'm packing. I don't know about you guys, but um, I get really excited for one trip. I always put the clothes aside that I'm gonna wear for tomorrow. So this is all the setup. Don't know if it's just me. <laughs> Maybe it is. So uh, I'm just leaving my place now. It is cloudy, as you can see. It's a uh, little bit of Karua, which is the little drizzle that you have here in Galapagos. And um, yeah, the crazy thing is that the weather will change. Pretty much 180 degrees if I reach a certain point um, from where we're going from, from Baltra, which is in the north of the island right now, in the south of Santa Cruz. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's gonna be so cool. After a 30 minute drive, this is how the weather is over here. Can't complain. <laughs> Global Whale Shark Research and Conservation Program. 
My name is Pablo. I am a diving instructor. Uh, I've been working in Galapagos for a while. Uh, I grew in the Galapagos, and uh, the first time I went in the water for me was like the best experience. I got a big amount of fish all around, and that was like something amazing for me, and that's why I started in the diving activities. So at least I have more than 3,000 dives. Carapagos Marine Reserve is a special place and uh, one of the reasons because this place is so special is because uh, of the marine current that have an effect in the wildlife here. We have current from the north, current from the south, current from the east. The Humboldt current is the one that brings a lot of nutrients, plankton, so from July to November we have the season where filter feeders like manta rays are coming to the Galapagos because of the Humboldt current that brings a lot of uh, plankton to the islands that made the place rich of nutrients. From the west part we have the Cromwell, that's a current that also brings nutrients even to the central islands. And the current from the north, the Panama current, is the, the warm current that uh, the first semester of the year have a lot of influence in the Galapagos. So that mix of current that brings animals from uh, all over the world is uh, what makes this place so special. I guess it's like Mecca for biologists. So he's just on the first dive. He was on um, North Samar Island and oh my god. <laughs> Probably um, yeah. one of the best ones, if not the best ones I've ever done. So chill, so cool. Guard eels, 1,000 of them just sticking out the, sticking out from the sand. I saw like 20 hammerheads. So this group of scalloped hammerhead sharks were actually my very first ones. And those garden eels that you can see in the background with those beautiful long necks, they just blew me off and made the dive so much more enjoyable with so much life going on left and right and even underneath you with them. And for some time of the dive, there was an eagle ray just following us very gently, just above the bottom. And same as with the hammerheads, because they kept coming back. So, enjoy these dive footages. What an amazing start to an amazing trip. So here I am, in my pretty little cabin, which I'm sharing with another guy from UK. And uh, first day is over, it's 8.34 now. And uh, that was a really good day. We only did one dive in North Seymour Island and um, you just feel like everybody's having so much fun here, especially the people who work here. They are uh, the naturalist guides, there's two of them. And uh, yeah, they're just having so much fun. They're being so silly, but also in the same way, so professional and so 
so serious but so engaging and they have so much knowledge about everything they're talking about which i find impressing every single time so tomorrow the wake-up call is going to be at 5 45 my alarm is at 5 30 maybe go catch the sunrise don't know yet and we're gonna have three dive spots tomorrow um this is gonna be really good <laughs> catch you then so here you can see Cape Marshall, which is located on the northeastern side of Isla Isabella. And honestly, the sunrise wasn't really good. But we did manage to be in the water very early. And we could see all the beauty that this place had in store for us. Look at this enormous swarm of barracudas that we encountered. of the dive. My favorite animal, the oceanic manta ray. to a size of seven meters from wing to wing. Just watch how effortlessly it is flying through the ocean. But that shouldn't be the last extraordinary encounter of that day. Galapagos penguin is the second smaller on there, like uh, 50 centimeters around. Like, they think. Funny to see them. Yes, you see right. There are even penguins in Galapagos. And just when you think the dive can't get any better, they just show up and come for a little splash with you. So that was day two of our um, navigation here around the Galapagos Islands and uh, we had the luck to see my favorite animals, the Mobula biostris, the oceanic manta ray. Um, that was really cool and right now we're on a ride to Darwin Island which we will arrive by tomorrow because it's around about 100 kilometers away and it takes 16 hours by boat to get there which is the reason why you do have a why you have to do a navigation like this many of us took a mistake and fell asleep for a long long nap after we finished our last dive so I slept for three hours until 5 p.m. and now it's 8.30 and I don't really feel tired. I'm a little bit seasick which is a bit bad. So I hope the night will be fine because um, tomorrow 
will probably be one of the best dives of my life, if not the best dive. And uh, fingers crossed for a good night. We have arrived. surreal places I have ever been to. Darwin and Wolf Island. Over a hundred kilometers away from the next civilization. Where it is only us most fantastic wildlife in the world. It's a place that you have life everywhere. So everywhere you move and everywhere you see, there's always something around. Darwin Island is in a, a really, really special place for whale sharks. Uh, it's one of the only places in the world where we can consistently see adult females. So the very biggest of the, the world's biggest fish. My favorite spots in the Galapagos Islands uh, is Darwin Island or Darwin's Art. You can imagine what you see there. It's So this was our first day out here in Darwin Island, which is this one. And uh, we just finished our fourth dive back here on Darwin's Art, what it used to be. Now it's just Darwin's Pillar since last year, May, since they had a rough season and it collapsed one part of it. And whew, the queen of this place, we met her in the very end. There was a 12, 14 meter whale shark I'd say in total a hundred, maybe more than a hundred hammerheads, moray eels, whatever you want. It was all here. It was all here. <laughs> That was extremely crazy. You just get to hold on to, to the rocks there for dear life, basically, because the current is kicking in. And the fishies get so close, the moray eels, they don't even stick to the rocks anymore. They just lay around there, which looks pretty funny. Sweet. 
basically have to wait and uh, wait for the live. So that is actually what you do on Darwin's Ark. You look for a comfy spot where you are protected from the current and you sit or stand there and wait and it feels like watching real life cinema and from time to time there's some big stuff coming around. Hammerheads. Most of the time they like circling against the current, so that's the way they can also breathe and get clean at the same time. So usually when we have kind of more current is where we have like more chance to see them really close to the reef. You see like the huge marks on the side, that's the mating mark. Uh, the sharks and rays, uh, the Lasma branch, they have like almost the same way to mate. And uh, basically the, the male, they bite one of the side of the female. So the one that can just take the female on the side bite, that's the one that made with them. See, they have lots of parasites. That's actually the reason because they approach into the reef just to get clean. They're not dangerous. They do a very important social behavior, Wolf and Darwin. And uh, basically we always go to the cleaning station point. So it's funny to see how they get clean. Like the way how that huge predator is approaching to the reef looking for a small kinanger and barber fish like the way out how they swim on the side slowly and to see how the small fish cleaning it's nice to know how they need a small fish like for a good interaction they're not just like passing by and eating that's what most people think it's just to see the interaction of the animals down there what made this place so special. Now coming into the room to see this. It really makes you smile too. <laughs> mm. Alright, so we have here so all these ones. They're the Nazca boobies. After the, the tectonic plate that's underneath here, and those big ones that we had before, they are the frigate birds who are parasites. So there's a few tropical birds, but this is one of the mascots. So pretty. Darwin Island, huh? what a place to be. Before I'm gonna take you down to the outer spots of Wolf and Darwin Island, I wanna show you this very special, this very secret cave. The inside of the little cave was covered in sea turtles, which looked absolutely beautiful in this light. Though so there was this little incident of a male sea turtle trying to copulate with another male one, and both of them kind of took off awkwardly, so I guess, sorry boys, didn't want to interrupt there. An 
also the light of this dive made this whole thing one of my very secret favorites over the whole time. And now, let's take you to the outer sides of Darwin and Wolf Island. Those are all these amazing creatures that you encounter at Wolf and Darwin Island. When you are lucky, you can even encounter this. Wait, didn't I mention here that we met the queen of the sea herself? Well, let me get Jenny to explain you what this feels like. So we use shakers underwater. So as soon as you hear the shaker, you do know there's a whale shark. So immediately when you he I heard the shaker, I was looking around where the whale shark is and I couldn't see it because we are usually with the back to the rocks and looking out to the blue of where it is. And I saw the divers coming towards me, so I didn't really realize what's going on until I turned around and basically looked her directly in the eye. And in this moment, I think I forgot everything. It's just, wow. When you have a huge animal like this swimming by you, it was calming on the one hand, but totally speechless. I mean, I, I didn't forget everything what I had to do underwater. It just was looking and wow. everyone 
different moment, obviously, but it's very, very unique. What is she feeling? What is going through her mind? What has she experienced in her life? How is she sensing her environment? Is she as interested in us as we are in her? Questions, which answers will be going beyond our human expectation and understanding. My favorite is the whale shark. <laughs> To dive with that giant is uh, one of the most amazing experiences that you have in your life, I think. We are studying whale sharks, um, which is a species that is still not that much known about. So we have a very unique population in the Galapagos Islands. So we have nearly 100% females um, and adult females, which are not as well studied as other parts of whale sharks, like young males, for example. So we still don't know where they give birth. We don't know where they're mating. So it's still a lot of things unknown about whale sharks. It's a massive privilege for me to be able to work with these adult females here in the Galapagos. So working with whale sharks is quite difficult because as they become adults, they seem to move away from the coast. So most of the work on adults has to be in the open ocean. So we're kind of looking for places like Darwin Island, these volcanic islands or seamounts way offshore uh, in very remote areas uh, and that's the only place we can really consistently find them. Whale sharks um, can get quite big, so the discussion is still how big they get. We say it's around 16 to 18 meters. However, there are also reports um, from other countries where there are sightings up to 20 meters. Incredible facts about whale sharks. I guess one of my favorite facts about the whale sharks is that it's kind of because we don't understand it very well, but they're the deepest diving of all fish. Um, our We've tracked them down to over 1900 meters uh, from the surface and that's partly just because we're limited to how deep our tags can go without getting crushed by the pressure. So they're making these incredible deep dives and we're not quite sure why. Like, I think it might have something to do with navigating the, using the Earth's magnetism and they can kind of detect it better at depth. Um, but yeah, that's, that's one that really interests me. The danger with diving with whale sharks I think there are not many if you respect the animal, the distance, um, their filter features, so they, they are no harm for you as a diver. However, many, many divers are obviously forgetting everything around them when they're diving with whale sharks. So a whale shark, if they're just gliding down, they do it very slowly, going deeper and deeper and deeper. So if you have a diver, don't watch your limits, like your depth, then it can be harmful for you as a diver. So I think the most important outcome of our research in Galapagos so far has been understanding a lot more about the movement patterns of the adult whale sharks. So we know now that they are an open ocean species. As they become older, like they don't really come onto the continental shelf anymore. So they're really out in deep water. And where that's really helped us conservation-wise is that we've been able to show uh, some of their sort of movement paths and where they overlap with fisheries and things. So that's helped lead to the Galapagos Marine Reserve being expanded and also a protected zone, a swimway, uh, created between the Galapagos National Park and Cocos Island, which is another world heritage area and a really important kind of pathway for whale sharks, silky sharks, hammerheads, all these other amazing species that share this environment. And how is it for me? How is it for me to be swimming next to one of the biggest fish in the ocean? Next to an animal much older, wiser and powerful than me? 
It is undescribable with no comparison in size and aura, but such gentleness and grace, like the queen of the sea herself. The way this ocean giant is almost non-reactive towards you, though it might be the first time she sees a human. With one simple move, she could do your critical harm, but there is nothing but respect. And the eye contact with her is something that you will never forget. The spiritual connection that you can achieve just by a look in each other's eye is enlightening, although we are so different. One is human and one is fish. There is still a soul in the eye. One is human, one is fish. So does it matter? We have to think outside of boundaries, which are all conventions, to be able to achieve incredible things. We have to think in new ways, in new orders. Cutting yourself from others is not the way the world works, no matter from human or any other living being. To be able to sustain yourself in a healthy manner, it is crucial to venture new ways, to think new, and think and act together. Because the alignments are going beyond our own environment and impacts everything and everyone around us in space and time. Consciousness and awareness are the keys in which way everything can act together as a whole again and restore the pieces that have been shattered to create the world we are craving for. So, this is it. We are leaving the two top dive spots in the Galapagos behind. But the adventure is not over yet. Exchange our hellos. I 
wasn't looking out for you I'm sorry, I'm so shallow But I'm still looking forward to watching Bouncing into the zero People are friendly me too mornings here. We went all night long to get to Isabella Island which is in the background here with an amazing landscape. We have sunrise right now and this in the back this also belongs to Isabella and here there that's Fernandina Island so this is the one of the that's furthest away from from Santa Cruz and the other ones and um, this is also the youngest one and uh, we'll dive first on Isabella on one of the spots and then later on Fernandina so Fernandina is actually well known for its um, um, massive eruptions there's a lot of research about volcanic activity there and one of the eruptions has almost wiped out the entire population of the Fernandina tortoise and here on Isabella this is also a quite young island, but you can see here how the different layers. This one looks so different. Geologically and geomorphologically, extremely interesting. This little, little part right here. So cool. Come join us exploring the underwater world of Punta Vicente Roca and Cousins Rock. this area is widely known for. Oh, no. 
cold. The diving in Isabella Island is usually cold, like most of the time, because of the Cromwell current that hit directly in the plate. But that's also special because that current brings a lot of uh, nutrients. So we have endemic animals like the flightless cormorant. Well, the molas are another weird animal. <laughs> it's weird to see an animal without tail. <laughs> Just a couple of fins uh, moving by. But it's so huge also. It's uh, the biggest heavy uh, fish, the bony fish. Important with molas, never approach too fast to them because they're very shy they just it's scary if you approach too fast and they just it's a heavy animal but it swims so fast so you can see them disappear in seconds really fast away to the end we had the chance to explore the area with one of the panga rides you're always Marine iguanas, they're vegetarian, so they actually have one, just once a day to eat. So that's also the reason because we're diving at midday. So they first getting warm, they go into the cold waters, and it's nice to see them like how the evolution made them to, to eat on the water. It's the only iguana on earth that is going in the water to eat. So. They eat algae and then just don't care even about divers or another kind of animal. Sometimes you see like the territorial damsel fish fighting with them and they, they don't care. They just have once a day to eat. They eat so hungry and they just eat and they go back to land. What a coincidence that we are in the top spot in the world for marine iguanas on Fernandina Island on Cape Douglas. A bit more playful than the marine iguanas are of course the sea lions.
all divers have the chance to help to conserve all the marine species, uh, for example, whale sharks and uh, sea turtles, manta rays. All of the well, most of the animals they have a kind of fingerprint. So, if we just have a camera, it's easy to take a photo of them, send to the scientists, and then they can know about the species if they come in here, how often they come here, and then we have uh, enough data to help the scientists and uh, the local governments to make a protected area in the Galapagos and also all around the Eastern Pacific. One of the best ways to get involved with whale shark research and conservation is if you are a diver or a snorkeler, if you go snorkeling with whale sharks, uh, you can take a photo of them and upload that to the Global Whale Shark Database and that's an amazing resource for tracking their movements and also their, like, their numbers over time to see if the population is hopefully increasing or in some areas it might still be decreasing due to human impacts. Avoiding single-use plastics because plastic pollution is something we're quite worried about with whale sharks and also like if you're going to eat fish just make sure it's from a sustainable source so we haven't got a bycatch issue like accidental catch of animals like whale sharks but also in general I think tourism has been one of the real forces for good with whale sharks so if you can join in on a trip to see them with like uh, good operators and the, the kind of people supporting research and conservation and that's a fantastic way to spend time with the world's biggest fish and also to contribute to their well-being while you're doing it. Well, I invite the people to visit the Galapagos uh, to know what, like the, what we can find here in the Galapagos and the way they can just know that there is a uh, animals that are traveling all around the eastern pacific not just in the galapagos where for sure we see them here but we need to protect all the area to see them in the future once again <laughs> ah. obviously the hope is to find out things like this to then have a more effects to protect areas like this to give a species like the whale sharks and other sharks a chance to survive ways to support the project here is to both if you've been diving in the Galapagos and you've seen whale sharks um, then definitely send in your photos or videos to the Galapagos Whale Shark Project. Um, also have a look at their website to see some of the upcoming trips with Galapagos shark diving uh, because that's like how we directly fund uh, the research here at Galapagos. So you can go diving in like the world's best dive destination and also support whale shark research and conservation. And what is it what I learned throughout this journey? Well, first of all, that there are still ecosystems that seem to be untouched from human influence as you would expect it in those remote areas. Having the opportunity to get here and also interact and meet leading scientists in their respective field in marine ecology and conservation was a true blessing and I feel that was not the last time I will see them. To be able to dive into the most abundant places in the Galapagos Islands is truly something special and I will honor this adventure for the rest of my life. The time coming to an end after so much action, fun and learnings, as well as beautiful animal interactions, feels like waking up from a long dream that you don't want to end and try to get back to you after you open your eyes.
I certainly hope that an opportunity like this will come up again to dive back into this dream world. But for now, thanks for watching and see you soon.